Okay, today we have the second part of the two videos uh, which show um, some features of the Tektronix 1241 logic analyzer. The two days video is the follow up to the first one. The first one were some basic uh, features of the Tektronix 1241 and this one is about um, connecting the 1241 via the GPIB interface uh, to a PC and to retrieve some data. Good, let's start with the hardware. Um, to connect the 1241 uh, to a PC, we need of course the GPIP interface, which is uh, at the back um, of the 1241, and uh, we need some GPIB controller. I've made here my own GPIB controller. Uh, basically, uh, we have um, uh, here at the back uh, a GPIB a cable coming in from the logic analyzer and at the front uh, we have uh, RS232 uh, in and output uh, which is connected with the PC. Uh, inside of this box there is a simple AVR microcontroller board um, with some uh, special software which emulates something like a GPIP uh, controller which is not very general but it's able and capable uh, to communicate with the Tektronix 1241. Um, to have some uh, data to retrieve, I, I inserted one probe. This is one pot. This is a, a pot in a first slot, in slot zero. Um, it's a pot with nine um, pins, input pins. And here at the back, um, the pot is connected to the test point, uh, test uh, test pattern generator here, um, there are two uh, very small slots in the 1241 um, which have some test pattern uh, data to uh, put on the screen and to uh, play with. Okay, now I will uh, switch on the 1241. Wait for finishing of the valve test. Okay, we are through, and I already switched on uh, the um, GPIB controller, um, and uh, the 1241 uh, has um, noticed that it's uh, connected to a GPI controller and uh, goes to some kind of remote mode, but we are able to interrupt this remote mode by pressing the stop key. Um, and uh, now I like to uh, do a small acquisition. I change uh, the operation level. Time base is okay. Um, memory configuration um, is switched to uh, glitches on. We do not need glitches, so I will switch this off. The rest is okay here. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, channel grouping, we do not have to do anything here. Um, uh, we have to define some kind of a trigger condition and I will uh, define the trigger condition as wait for some uh, hexadecimal value of let's say FF at um, group A, which is the pot zero here. Um, then trigger, that's all for the trigger condition. and. Um, 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 one thing is, uh, we will look for the trigger after the complete um, acquisition memory is uh, filled. So then we are OK. We go to data here and we can now start uh, an acquisition. I, I will move uh, back. So we start it. It uh, has already uh, triggered and um, we are now in the state table. I switch over to the time a diagram and we'll uh, have a look for the um, trigger data. Ah, I forgot uh, one important thing. We have only zeros here because I didn't uh, 
configure correctly uh, the card threshold. The card threshold is um, by default a TGL level, which is not okay for the test point uh, generator because we need here a TPG uh, threshold, which is different from TTL and uh, thus uh, now um, during the first acquisition the logic analyzer was not able to uh, find any ones uh, in the signal, but we will repeat it. I just press start again, move back here, start the acquisition again. Okay, and what we are now here can see very good is that we have uh, catched some data from a group uh, A0 to group A7. So A, we have eight bits of, of data and can scroll uh, through, the, through the area. Uh, here, the, the, um, I don't know if we can see it. Oh yeah, it's possible. Uh, there is a very thin red um, hatched line. This is the trigger point. If, if we move the cursor here uh, exactly on the trigger point, we get um, a cursor position of zero microseconds. Um, far away uh, from the trigger point. If we move in the in the future from the trigger point, for example, to this point here, we have 0 0.8 microseconds um, after the trigger event. Uh, and then we have at the cursor uh, the data, um, the bits are forming the data 2C in hexadecimal. <coughs> if we move back to the uh, trigger time point, of course, uh, we have an FF because this was the trigger condition. Um, doing this, we can move around in uh, in time and uh, look uh, for uh, thing, things that had have happened um, uh, around the trigger event. Okay, so um, this is now <coughs> our um, acquisition, uh, and I like to transfer it uh, to my PC to do further processing. So now I have started the SoftTech um, client, which is an um, Eclipse-based uh, rich client um, program based in Java. It's running on Linux here, on OpenSUSE. Um, and this is um, how it comes up. And there is a big uh, viewing area for the acquisition data, which is empty so far. Um, it's possible to uh, have some, um, do some basic configuration uh, here. I move to some uh, to the device tab where I can put in some serial port configuration, like uh, which is the port here, um, the baud rate and uh, data bit parity, and blah blah blah, such, uh, such things, uh, and the GPIB device address we like to communicate with. So it's two here because the default address of the 1241 is two. Okay, I move back to the other tab. I already connected uh, to the device. Um, and uh, now I will download some setup data because it's uh, required uh, for an acquisition to all also to have the setup data here. The download is finished, and I will uh, download now the acquisition memory, which about which is about 10 uh, k bytes. K bytes. Um, this lasts some time because we are using just a um, not so uh, fast serial port here. I press the button, acquisition memory, and at the bottom uh, we have some kind of uh, progress monitor here. As I said, it is about 10k. Okay, it's uh, here, and uh, what we can see, we have now uh, the data downloaded and can inspect it by moving around. Um, and also here in this di direction. Of course, all those uh, we can now see all the groups which are 72 uh, input uh, pins of um, possible input pins of the uh, Tech 1241, but uh, um, most of them are not used in this acquisition and uh, they are all zero. Uh, and I can uh, switch off them uh, by uh, do some uh, here. Uh, um, 
by undisplayed, um, let's say, the, the, the group 7 and the group 6 and the group 5. Oh, that's okay, that's enough. And if I go back, uh, all the other groups have disappeared. Um, I can uh, use uh, the cursors. Yeah, I have two cursors and if I move around the cursor, which is the green line here, um, I can see uh, the position here in the acquisition memory, it's po position 11. Uh, more interesting is the, uh, the time point here, which is um, uh, 4.9 microseconds before the trigger event. Uh, maybe I can move a little bit closer here. And at uh, the bottom I can see uh, um, the value which is uh, formed by the bits here from the pot which is uh, 0x7d in hexadecimal and um, some uh, binary representation of this value. And uh, there is one other cursor implemented so I have two cursors to to move around here. Okay, now it's uh, possible to uh, to save uh, here. I can now uh, um, save this um, acquisition. So uh, um, saving it will mean uh, both the setup data and the acquisition memory will go to to the hard disk. And of course, I can load later on. Uh, this data. So I, I will do um, the, the save here. Uh, some dialogue is coming up uh, and I can uh, let's say um, I can move a little bit around and I will name it uh, test 71 let's say dot tech and store it away. I uh, also of course can load some old data. Um, I just like to see uh, yeah. I like to show them maybe more complex data. Maybe we have some glitches. Okay. I have here some some signal including glitches. It looks a little bit different. So um, it's it's um, basically the view is the same here, but um, the glitched uh, data bits um, are shown with some small red uh, point inside them.